This three month old Pixel 8 Pro here, old news, ancient history, because hey, the Pixel 9 is coming and you know it's time to get hyped. Okay, okay, exaggerations aside, we do already know quite a lot about the upcoming Pixel 9 phones, that there could be as many as three models this time, a huge visual revamp moving things in a more iPhone-y direction, and some size changes that could be seen as a downgrade. So let's not waste any more time. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA TV, and this is what we know so far about the Google Pixel 9. So in the current era of Google phones, we've had the Pixel 6, 7, 8, and now Pixel 9. So let's get this one big leak out of the way before we get to looking what it actually means. These images in the form of CAD renders come to us via OnLeaks, MySmartPrice, and 91 Mobiles. Ultimately, OnLeaks is the original source of these and the guy has a pretty solid track record, so I feel confident in saying they are very likely legit. What we're looking at here then is the biggest design overhaul since the current Pixel aesthetic arrived back in 2021. There's still a camera bar around the back, but now fashioned in the style of the Pixel Fold, disconnected from the aluminum of the outer shell, making it more of a traditional camera protrusion, even though it is, you know, still kind of a big old bar. The elephant in the room here is the Pixel is getting a whole lot more iPhone-y with this latest design refresh. Its corners have wider curves, kind of mirroring the change made in 2023 with the 8 Pro's camera visor, and that curve now applies to the outer edges of the camera model as well. Even the thickness and proportions of these look very iPhone-like in the same way that nothing Phone 1 and Phone 2 kind of riff on Apple design language. Besides which, it's a sharp looking phone and it's great to see the bay blue colour of the 8 Pro apparently making a comeback later this year. Plus these wider corners are a central part of the Material U design language so you could say this is just as much a case of Google's hardware design mimicking that of its software. The most surprising thing about these leaks though might be the revelation that both pixels are actually getting smaller this year. The regular Pixel 9 will pack a 6.1 inch screen losing a tenth of an inch compared to the 8, and its big brother is trimming down even further, going from a 6.7 inch panel in the 8 Pro to 6.5 here in the 9 Pro. The Pro Pixels have used 6.7 inch screens for the past few years, as does the iPhone and a lot of the Android competition. And on a related note, it sure looks like Google is going back to the original first gen Pixel strategy of making one phone in two sizes. Take a look at the Tarantula Eye camera cluster on here. If this is accurate, it sure looks like the exact same collection of lenses, including a periscope telephoto in both Pixel 9 and 9 Pro to the point where the Pro moniker might even be redundant. If, as it appears, the only difference is the size and possibly also the battery capacity, this might as well just be a Pixel 9 XL or a Pixel 9 Max. But why does it seem like Google suddenly seems to be favouring smaller phones? The Pixel 9 could be the most capable small Pixel yet, with one of the first super zoom periscope telephotos in a device of this size. And even the ostensibly big Pixel looks like it's going to be hit by the Google shrink ray to some extent, losing 0.2 inches of diagonal screen space. Why is that? Well, I think the reason for this change could have something to do with the market that's become increasingly important for Google over the past year or so, Japan. Now, I was in Japan a couple of months back and I was amazed by how many Pixels I saw out in the wild. And it was typically the smaller models that people were carrying, not the pros. Turns out that anecdotal evidence is backed up by the stats. According to CounterPoint Research, Google became the number two phone brand in Japan in 2023, behind Apple, but comfortably ahead of Samsung and Sony. From a Western perspective, it's totally wild to me that Japanese consumers are buying more pixels than they are Samsung Galaxies, and yet that's exactly what's happening. As a result, in the earlier quarter, Q1 23, Japan made up more than a third of the Pixel brand's overall sales. Now, Japan as a market has traditionally favoured smaller phones, so the move to a more capable miniature Pixel obviously makes a lot of sense for what is an increasingly important country given the state of its market position. To make sense of what this means for the future of the Pixel though, we need to go back to a couple of earlier leaks. The first comes from Android Authority and is fairly old, having emerged in late 2022. It's basically a summary of Google's Pixel roadmap running through until the end of 2025. Obviously a snapshot of an internal roadmap at one point in time is exactly that, and things can change, especially as we get towards the later stages of that roadmap. That said, all of the information in it has turned out to be accurate so far, and what it says about Google's plans for 2024 is pretty intriguing. 
The roadmap suggests there were three Pixel 9 phones originally planned for 2024. To use the iPhone analogy, that would be a Pixel 9, 9 Pro, and 9 Pro Max. That's not including a Pixel 8a, by the way, which it says Google was considering switching to a less frequent release schedule a la iPhone SE. Also doesn't include the Pixel Fold 2, which we'll get to in a little bit. So of those three Pixel 9s, only two devices are actually given codenames. The Pro Max Pixel, codenamed Komodo, and the smaller Pro, codenamed Cayman, which is a little crocodile-looking thing that, thanks to Google, I learned apparently makes a noise like blasting asteroids in a vintage 80s shoot'em up. Anyway, it seems like what we have pictured in the most recent render leaks are in fact Cayman and Komodo. The smaller non-pro Pixel 9 may well have been repurposed into a Pixel 9a or even 10a, or perhaps just canned in its entirety. There have been plenty of other abandoned Pixel projects over the years, to name just two, the mythical HTC Pixel 2 XL, which eventually emerged in prototype form a few years back, and this goofy alternative universe version of the Pixel 5, originally leaked by John Prosser, which, I'm told by sources, was in fact one of the designs being considered before Google really put the mid into mid-range with the actual Pixel 5. Point is, you can see how plans change over the years, and roadmaps can be tweaked based on the success or otherwise of current models and the state of the competition. Finally, let's talk chips, because the Tensor processors powering Google's phones have had a bit of a mixed reputation since their introduction in 2021. Google has said it's never been about chasing the highest benchmarking scores. Nevertheless, these chips have had a track record of running hotter, getting slightly weaker battery life, and being demonstrably worse at heavy gaming than the equivalent phone with the latest Snapdragon. Now, detractors will say that's because although Tensor is a Google-branded chip, Samsung is in fact doing a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. And that ultimately, this is just a Samsung Exynos SoC behind a pair of glasses and fake moustache. Exynos is the in-house chip Samsung uses in its Galaxy phones in some countries that's considered to be worse than Snapdragon by a lot of fans. We've got a whole other video on the Exynos versus Snapdragon drama if you're interested. But it seems that Exynos relationship is about to go away, and reportedly the first fully customized chip for Pixel was planned in 2024, with Google working alongside TSMC, the Taiwanese chip giant that also builds SoCs for Qualcomm and Apple. That's according to a 2023 report from The Information, and such a chip would likely be much more competitive and make for a much more vertically integrated Pixel phone, because Google will be designing more of the chip itself. But there's a catch. The information also reported that the fully customized Tensor G4 that was originally planned for 2024, codenamed Redondo, missed production deadlines, meaning Google will likely be falling back on another partnership with Samsung to power the Pixel 9. So I would probably expect a chip loosely based on the Exynos 2400 SoC, currently powering the Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus in Europe and some other regions. The upside of that is Exynos seems to have improved in its latest generation according to the benchmarks. But yeah, still disappointing to see that this landmark pixel with its flashy new design won't get the new chip Google originally envisaged. Nevertheless, the actual Tensor G4 could also power this year's Pixel Fold 2. Android Authority got the scoop here, showing this weirdo camera bulge, a later launch date, and potentially a Pixel 9 matching Tensor G4 chip inside. Kind of makes sense here for Google's most expensive phone of the year to just wait for Pixel 9 time when the new Tensor chip is ready, as opposed to running the G3 in just a few months before it's due to be superseded. So there you have it, a new design with smaller sizes across the board, a full trifecta of cameras in the most compact model, and more chip changes coming later in the year with a serious upgrade for the Fold and an even better Tensor hopefully following in 2025. Let us know in the comments what you're looking forward to seeing from Google's Pixel lineup this year and subscribe for our review when it's time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.